Bovine malignant catarrhal fever is usually an acute systemic viral disease of cattle, occasionally also of Asian and African buffaloes, and a wide range of captive antelope and deer, as well as free-living deer. It is characterized by a low morbidity and an extremely high case mortality rate. The disease occurs worldwide. In Africa, it is predominantly found where cattle are in close contact with blue and black wildebeest. Outside Africa, it is usually associated with contact between sheep and susceptible species. Sheep-associated malignant catarrhal fever is also present in Africa, but is less common. Both the wildebeest-associated and sheep-associated forms are not transmitted from cattle to cattle, as the latter are strict end hosts. In recent years, game farming in many countries in Africa has developed into a major industry and has resulted in an increase in the incidence of wildebeest-associated malignant catarrhal fever. The disease has not been reported in free-living wild animals in Africa, notwithstanding that wildebeest frequently roam with a wide variety of antelope. Cases in wild animals exotic to Africa, such as Asiatic cattle, bison species, and the Asian nilgai, which are all highly susceptible, have been limited to zoological gardens. In some countries in Australasia and Europe, malignant catarrhal fever is of economic importance in farm deer. Malignant catarrhal fever is a disease caused by a group of closely related viruses of the subfamily Gamma herpes virinae. Malignant catarrhal fever derived from wildebeest is caused by Alcelophene herpes virus type 1. In the host, the virus is strictly cell associated. The causative agent of sheep associated malignant catarrhal fever has not been characterized and all attempts to isolate the agent from sheep or sick cattle have been unsuccessful. On the basis of sequencing of DNA obtained from lymphoblastoid cell lines generated from cattle and deer with sheep associated malignant catarrhal fever and cross hybridization with clones of the unique region of the genome of Alcelophene herpes virus type 1 the virus has been classified as ovine herpes virus type 2. Other closely related but distinct gamma herpes viruses have been described and provisionally named, including Alcelophine herpes virus type 2, isolated from the red hartebeest, Alcelophus bucellophus, Hippotragine herpes virus, isolated from the Rhone antelope, Hippotragus equinus, an unnamed gamma herpes virus isolated from white-tailed deer and caprine herpes virus 2 that is endemic in domestic goats, Capra herpes. None of these viruses has been confirmed as a cause of malignant catarrhal fever in domestic cattle. Most adult wildebeest should be regarded as persistently infected but may occasionally, under conditions of stress, excrete the virus and infect cattle. Wildebeest do not develop any signs of disease as a result of infection. Wildebeest become infected in utero or by horizontal spread between wildebeest calves up to the fourth or fifth month of life. These calves have virus in the blood continuously for several weeks or months, but later only intermittently up to 13 or 14 months of age. Wildebeest calves are most important in the transmission of malignant catarrhal fever as they excrete non-cell associated viruses in their nasal and ocular secretions. In the Maasai lands of East Africa, the seasonal occurrence of malignant catarrhal fever in cattle, predominantly in March and April in northern Tanzania and April to July in southern Kenya, has long been associated with the wildebeest calving seasons. Therefore, the disease is most common in cattle when the wildebeest calves are two to three months old. However, in South Africa, two peaks in the incidence of the disease are encountered. One in January to May, following the wildebeest calving season in December to February, 
and a second in which the incidence is higher from September to November when the wildebeest calves are 9 to 11 months old. Although close contact, such as at communal water holes, is generally regarded as necessary for the transmission of wildebeest-derived malignant catarrhal fever to cattle, there are several accounts of transmission across fences, even at distances of up to several hundred meters. The epidemiology of sheep-associated malignant catarrhal fever is essentially the same as that of wildebeest-derived malignant catarrhal fever. As with wildebeest, sheep do not show any clinical or pathological evidence of infection. Outside Africa, a seasonal incidence of sheep-associated malignant catarrhal fever has been reported with cattle being most likely to develop disease during the lambing season. The pathogenesis of malignant catarrhal fever is poorly understood, but it has been suggested that immune-mediated events play a role. Infection of large, granular T lymphocytes with cytolytic or natural killer NK activity and the consequent deregulation of the immunomodularity functions of these cells precede the clinical signs. When these cells are compromised, it leads to T lymphocyte hyperplasia by suppression of T helper cell function and cellular necrosis as a result of direct cytotoxic action of the proliferating NK cells. A generalized vasculitis and perivascular lymphoid infiltration is found, in addition to widespread lymphoid degeneration and necrosis in many tissues. The incubation period is usually about two weeks, but may be as long as seven months or even longer. The classic presentation of bovine malignant catarrhal fever is fever, anorexia, and inflammation of the mucous membranes of the mouth, nose, and eyes. The ocular and nasal discharges may at first be serous or seromucoid, but later become more profuse and mucopurulent. A trail of matted hair on the cheeks and long strings of exudates hanging from the nostrils are often evident. Obstruction of nasal passages leads to dyspnea, open mouth breathing, and drooling of saliva. The muzzle rapidly becomes dry, necrotic, and cracked, and the mucopurulent exudate from the nose, which may be blood-stained, coagulates, forming a tightly adherent crust that may partially occlude the nostrils. Hyperemia and multifocal erosions of the oral mucosa are seen usually on the insides of the lips, dental pad, hard and soft palate, ventral side of tongue, and buccal papillae. There is severe conjunctivitis. Bilateral corneal opacity is a constant and characteristic finding in all cases of malignant catarrhal fever. It starts at the limbus and progresses towards the center to eventually cause impaired vision or total blindness. Affected cattle are photophobic and frequently keep their eyes closed and strongly resist efforts to open them. Other signs and lesions that may be seen in cases of malignant catarrhal fever include diarrhea, which may be blood-tinged, necrotic dermatitis of the interdigital skin around the dew claws and inner thighs, generalized lymph adenopathy, and terminally signs of neurological involvement such as hypersensitivity, muscle tremors, nystagmus, incoordination, high stepping gait, convulsions, and stupor. At necropsy, the severity of lesions varies according to the course of the disease. Apart from the eye and mouth lesions alluded to earlier, erosions and ulcers in the esophagus, four stomachs, abomasum, and occasionally the small and large intestines are seen. The liver is sometimes enlarged, and the gallbladder wall may be edematous. The peripheral and visceral lymph nodes are usually swollen and congested. 
Small erosions and hemorrhages in the mucosa and edema of the wall are frequently present in the urinary bladder. In most cases, the kidneys are slightly swollen and reveal small white foci of lymphoid infiltration in the cortex. In some animals, small hemorrhagic foci are also evident. The most constant histopathological lesions are severe necrotizing vasculitis and perivascular lymphoid infiltrations, especially of the arterioles and smaller blood vessels of various tissues and organs, but particularly of the kidneys, brain, lungs, liver and abumasum. Necrosis and proliferation of the lymphoid elements of the lymph nodes and spleen is usually prominent. A presumptive diagnosis of malignant catarrhal fever can be made on the herd history, clinical signs and pathology. In most outbreaks in Africa, there is evidence of recent close contact between cattle and either wildebeest or rarely sheep. Confirmation of the diagnosis of wildebeest-associated malignant catarrhal fever requires either isolation of the virus from blood or tissues of the affected animal or detection of viral nucleic acid by means of the polymerase chain reaction method. Organs should be collected as soon as possible after death. To retain viability of lymph node and spleen cells, specimens from these tissues should be dispersed by being cut into small fragments into cell culture medium containing 5 to 10 percent serum. As infectivity in wildebeest-derived malignant catarrhal fever is associated with viable host cells, blood should be collected in an anticoagulant such as heparin, preferably before death. All specimens should be kept at 4 degrees Celsius and inoculated into cell cultures as soon as possible, preferably on the day of collection, or stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius provided a cryoprotectant such as glycerol is used. Clinical signs and characteristic necropsy lesions in cattle remain the basis for diagnosis of sheep-associated malignant catarrhal fever. But confirmation can be obtained by means of the polymerase chain reaction procedure. Serology is of limited value in the diagnosis of wildebeest-associated malignant catarrhal fever as most cattle die after a few days of illness and affected animals only develop humoral antibody responses late in the course of the disease. Except for the virus neutralization test, serological cross-reactions occur with other bovid herpes viruses when serological tests such as the ELISA and fluorescent antibody tests are used with alcelophene herpes virus type 1 capture antigens. Bovine malignant catarrhal fever must be differentiated clinically, especially from infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, mucosal disease, and rinderpest. There is at present no vaccine to prevent malignant catarrhal fever. The only reliable preventive measure is to keep cattle separated from potential reservoir species such as wildebeest or sheep. Separation of wildebeest from cattle by several hundred meters is regarded as necessary to prevent the infection in cattle. Since animals clinically infected with malignant catarrhal fever rarely survive, euthanasia is advised in advanced cases. The presence of the disease is of economic importance to cattle farmers. Game farmers who keep wildebeest for the purpose of ecotourism and hunting can indirectly contribute to losses experienced by neighboring cattle farmers. For these groups to maintain favorable relations and work towards the mutual benefit of all, it is important that the interests of both be considered when planning the implementation of preventive measures.